Hello my quilting friends, my name is Leah Day and welcome to this new Frame Quilting Friday video. I am actually setting up a new quilting frame. This is Grace's newest frame, it's the Q-Zone Hoop Frame and it sets up in just four and a half feet. So it's a very small frame and you can use your home sewing machine on it too. So the very first step that I'm gonna do is take everything out of the boxes and make sure that I have all the parts I need. And this is exactly how it ships in three big boxes and I have a fourth box with the back table inserts and that's an extra optional accessory. So I'm gonna take my time pulling everything out, double checking that I have all of the tools and materials that I need and then we're gonna set up our Grace hoop frame together. So I've taken my time, taken everything out of the boxes, and it is really important to go slow and follow your guide. It has a very handy list of all the things that you need. Uh, I had a little tiny part, this little bolt for the carriage lock, and it was still stashed in the box. <laughs> so it's really easy to miss little things like this. So make sure to go through everything really slowly and carefully so that you're sure you have all the parts that you need before you get started. Okay, so the very first part of the build is working on these sides. And uh, there's a couple different things here. First thing is to loosen these two screws and rotate this around so you can really see. You're gonna loosen these two screws on the bottom with the smaller Allen wrench. And you're just gonna pull this out a bit for the size of machine that you're using. And I'm just gonna put a home sewing machine on my frame to start out with. So um, there's two different notches. Hopefully you can see this back notch is for a machine that is bigger than 16 inches. This front notch is for machines that are less than 16 inches. So I'm gonna slide this in until that notch is uh, just inside and then tighten that up. Not too tight, just tight enough to hold it, but not so tight that it's really cranked down on, right? There we go. So the next thing to think about is the height of your frame. And the Q-Zone frame is unique in that uh, it can be set up as a sit down. You can sit down in a chair while you move your machine over the quilt, or you can set it up so you can stand at this frame and move the machine over the quilt. So it's totally up to you which way you wanna do it. I'm gonna set mine up as a set down just to get that experience and see how that feels. And so I don't need to adjust the height of the legs. I'm gonna leave it at the lowest setting. But if you wanted to set this up nice and tall, simply unscrew this uh, bolt right here and the one on the other side. And be careful as you uh, adjust up, you wanna make sure it kind of stays even so that you're pulling, basically you've got a long pole here down both sides and if you pull on one and not the other at the same rate, they'll kind of get bound up a little bit. So pull evenly and smoothly as you lift it up higher. And then I would start at the highest setting and then see if that feels good once you get your machine in place. If it doesn't, then you can adjust it lower and find the perfect place where you really like it. Uh, and to adjust that, you're gonna need the larger Allen wrench and the extra wrench the other side to hang on to the bolt, you're gonna need that smaller end. So that's what you're gonna do in order to adjust that. So mine's ready to go. You've also got some little self-leveling feet here you can play with. Uh, I'm gonna worry about that just a little bit later once the uh, two sides of the frame are actually put together so that way I can actually use a level and level it using those feet. So that looks pretty good. Now we have two corner braces, that is a device that looks like this, and we need to attach these to the frame. So here's how this is gonna go. You're gonna take the corner brace and make sure these um, kind of pockets are facing, see I'm facing the front of the frame and you can kind of tell that because these bars are where the, um, the quilt is gonna go. Okay, so that kind of up higher part that tells you that's the front of the frame. And then I'm gonna take that corner brace and there's two screw holes on this side. Now the nice thing about this frame is there's very few bolts and stuff that you have to screw in. There's only one size of bolt, so you don't have to sit there and wonder which bolt to use, it's all one thing. And I'm just going to tighten this up by hand. I'm not gonna crank down on it with my Allen wrench because this is something that's gonna to need to adjust as uh, the frame goes together. So I'm just gonna finger tighten the, these bolts up and then I will tighten it down nice and tight once 
uh, I get to that step and the instructions say that's the thing to do. So here we go, that feels good. All right, and now I'm going to slide it down and I've got another piece, one more corner brace to attach down here. And I had a bit of a spatial orientation kind of thing. I was doing that number with uh, you know that square part down here, that's wrong, that's not what you want. You want it to be up here like this, that is your goal. And just line that up, rotate this around so I can see what I'm doing. Here we go, yeah. And then again, I'm going to just finger tighten those bolts. And if ever you screw in a screw and it just doesn't seem to be wanting to go, don't force it. Uh, that's when you can strip out a screw and then nothing will go into that hole again. Uh, so back out, most likely the screw's just not seated in there right. And yeah, like I said, I'm just, just tight. I'm just rolling this into, threading it up nicely. So this is how much play I'm leaving in this. You can see it's still a little bit wiggly wobbly. That one's a little bit more so. Just tighten it up by hand. Just use your fingertips to tighten up those screws. That's as much as you need. And then when we get these two pieces together, that's when we're really tighten these down and get them nice and secure. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab a handy helper and we're gonna stand up both sides of the frame and start putting it together. So this is the stage that you need a handy helper and I have grabbed my son James and he helped me out by standing up uh, one side and I stood up this side and then we put on one of the uh, table support assembly pieces. This is the bar and this gives you an idea of how big the frame is. So you can start seeing how, you know, the footprint that it's going to take up in your home basically. So this is where you're going to attach that piece that we just screwed on to the side we're going to screw that in with more bolts here. There's two holes. And again, I'm just gonna put this in and, and take it to finger tight, right? And the biggest key here is just to have someone holding the other side so it doesn't fall over <laughs> while you're trying to get the bars in. There we go. And I already have one screw on that side just to hold it up. So really, really simple. Just thread that in. Screw it in with your fingers, and then another one on this side. Thank you so much, James. So at this stage, the frame is pretty much standing up on its own, so James could go do his own thing, and I can pretty much put the rest of this together myself. And so you're gonna need another table assembly support, this, black, this bar that has the black band across the top that lets you know you got the right piece. And then also look for the screw holes. It has a double screw hole on both end on the back side. And again, I'm gonna look for those corner supports that I put in before and just adjust the frame until the holes line up. And I found it was really easy to have the legs kind of winging out. So what's nice is having the double holes uh, both on the sides of the corner supports and on the bar that keeps it square. And then I'll also take a level and actually level this properly too. So there we go. And again, I'm just finger tightening these screws and it looks like, yep, that's all the screws <laughs> that I had to screw in here. So that was a very, very quick and easy build. So at this point, the instructions say to tighten up all of the bolts. So I'm gonna work a few at a time, just giving that a nice tighten. And as that tightens up, the whole thing will become a lot more stable because as you can see, still a little bit wobbly. So here we go. I'm tightening up that side. And then you also wanna just kind of visually look at it and see that that leg is nice and straight. Probably gonna go get my level. I have a two foot level that I think would be perfect for this job, just so I can double check that uh, basically the sides are running nice and straight and I'm level going across this bar. So I pulled out my eight foot and two foot level and I realized the two footer is actually absolutely perfect for the Q-Zone frame because it's wide enough that it can span from the black bar to the black bar so you can know if the frame is level this way, uh, meaning that it's setting nice and straight and square to the floor and the 
Best thing is, is it's absolutely perfectly level already. So just in case you don't know how to read a level, and this was something that was kind of a mystery to me for a really long time, let me explain how it works. So for that kind of leveling like this, you're looking at the center bubble. And what you wanna do is you wanna just see if that center bubble is lining up between the two lines in that little window. And whenever I set it here on the side, that's exactly what it's doing. It's lining up perfectly in that center window. Now you wanna check this both on the edge about you know, two to four inches from the edge of the frame in the middle and on the opposite edge too. So that way you can see if anything's going off in any weird way. And then again, you can adjust these bolts in order to fix that. Now the other way that you use a level is to see if something is straight up and down uh, and going the right way that way. So here we go. This, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm setting it right up against that leg and I'm avoiding hitting that, there's a bolt right here. I don't wanna hit that because of course that's gonna throw off the level, right? So I'm just lining this up against the leg and here I saw another thing that could potentially throw this off is that there's an extra plate here. Hmm, maybe instead level it right there, then there's no extra bolts or anything to get in the way. Now in this situation, when you're vertically leveling something, you're looking at this top bubble. And again, you want to look at that bubble and make sure that it's going right in the middle of those two black lines. So when I line this up here and check it, it looks like, and then I always just tilt it just to see which way I need to go. It looks like I need to bring the bottom of the legs out by about a quarter of an inch. So what I'll do is loosen these two bolts and these two bolts that are on this corner plate, bring out the leg, check it for level again, no big deal. So if you wanna add a new tool to your toolbox for the Q-Zone frame, I think a two foot level is absolutely perfect. You don't need an eight foot level, you don't need anything bigger, but I think a two foot level is a really good investment and they're not super expensive. So I'm gonna finish leveling this up, get it absolutely perfect, and then we'll move on to the next step. So the next step is to install our front rail. And what we're gonna do is take off this plastic cover here, and there's two bolts, and you're gonna need the bigger Allen wrench, and there's just two bolts to remove here from underneath. And lefty loosey, righty tighty. <laughs> it really helps to remember that. There we go. Once I get it loose, I found the other one uh, came out really easily. So there we go, just unscrew that one. And it's a nice long bolt. Now you wanna keep those handy because you're gonna reinsert it right after you get the rail in place. There we go. And so that part just pops right out. Now, Grace Company packages the rails so that you have not only the rail, but also the clamps already installed. And this is really useful because it can get a little confusing which clamps go to what if you take everything apart. So I just left all of this put together when I pulled it all out of the box. And I know this is the front rail. The front rail has this kind of wavy clamp has that groove, and then it also said front rail. <laughs> so here we go. The key with this is to kind of pull the edges apart because it really grips actually really well, especially with the plastic, and pull that out. There we go, so we've got one clamp off. Do the same thing with the other one, and then I can get the plastic off. What you don't want to do is try and grip and pull because it'll just tighten up even more. Those clamps are really well designed. Okay, so now I slip the plastic off. Okay, and now you have two holes. You have a smaller hole and a bigger hole on the end. You want the bigger hole facing up. And there should be a little kind of a plastic thing for that to sit down into, the smaller hole to sit down into. It looks like I need to go to the other side and check it. Yeah, some uh, Line this up so the smaller hole is fitting down into a um, the basically kind of the bolt casing. And here's a picture of that. So once you're sure you have that in place and you've got the larger hole on the rail facing up, then you're gonna replace that plastic piece right on top and replace the bolts and just screw it in and tighten it up. So the next step is to start working with the carriage. I cannot wait. So I'll meet you back here when we're ready for that next step.
So here is the carriage that's gonna hold either a long arm or uh, the secondary carriage for a home sewing machine. And I want to just remove one of these wheels and this is symmetrical, so uh, there's not really a front or a back. Uh, so I've selected this wheel is what I'm going to take off and install my channel lock. So here we go, it's a little tight, so just give it a good pop and you're using the largest Allen wrench here. So I'm just gonna remove that. And you wanna be careful not to lose anything here because you've got some things that you definitely need. You're gonna need this spacer, the wheel and that bolt, keep all of those handy. And then pull out, this is the carriage channel lock and it's a little bit on the confusing side. I'll be honest, I had to take a minute to just stare at this and make sure that I had it right. Uh, so you wanna make sure that it's going on, I'm pretty sure that you want it to be going on like this so that when you lock it down, it's locking down and the uh, tab to hang on to is to the back of the machine like so. Uh, because we were thinking this is going to be the back of the carriage. That's what we're making it, okay? Uh, but it's going to go actually on this side, and I'm going to take my bolt. That's going to go through first, then the wheel back on, then that spacer. Don't forget about that spacer that goes on because you've got to have something between the wheel and this bar here. Now, as I tighten this up, the instructions were really specific about one thing pushing, it's kind of a, a rectangle here of metal, push that so it's nice and firm and tight against this back bar. They call this the extrusion. So when you tighten this down, uh, before you tighten it down, you get it really, really like pop tight like that. Make sure you, you see there's a little bit of play here in that device, push it right up against that back bar so it's nice and tight and then tighten up that screw real tight and the wheel can still turn just fine. And we can see that channel lock is set up just exactly right. Now this was just a little bit confusing, so let's get it on the frame and check that it's right. So it looks like the most important thing to check before you put the carriage on the frame is just that that is open. So that's the closed position with that red tab down and you can see the stopper is nice and tight to that piece of metal there. When it's in the open position, that stopper is much higher up. So that's open. Now I'm gonna place this so that that channel lock is going to the back. There we go, there we go. And it was kind of hard to see there because the channel lock is kind of blocking your view of the wheel. And your goal here is to get the wheels lined up on the black track. That's what that should roll on. And so now you wanna roll this back and forth and you actually wanna loosen up these bolts. So now I'm wheeling this back and forth and the instructions say to loosen up these uh, M connector bolts, these same bolts that we've been using throughout the process. And these were already installed before the frame came. Uh, I noticed that these were already screwed into the front and back supports. So you just loosen these up a little bit, just I mean, it's literally just taking them to loose so that the bar can move around. And see that this, can, this has play in it now. It can move back and forth. And that, that's gonna allow you to do is adjust it so that the frame will move smoothly back and forth across the carriage. And I don't know how much you, know, you really need to adjust necessarily. I'd say loosen it, wheel it back and forth, make sure that the carriage is not rolling on its own. <laughs> that implies that it's not level. Uh, you know, if you, if you wheel it over and it feels stuck, that's something you don't want. Also, when you wheel it over and it keeps rolling all the way down the frame really fast, that's what you don't want either. So I'm gonna loosen these, I'm gonna wheel it back and forth, and then I'm gonna tighten them down. So there we go, that looks good. And this is kind of, I guess it's kind of self-correcting. You know, it's loosened up. So then as you wheel it back and forth, you know, it's really kind of pushing and moving the bolts, the, the bars, if they need to be moved. So there we go. Yeah, that feels really nice and stable. Very, very easy to put together too. All right, so now I'm just gonna go through and tighten all of these up. And while I'm at it, I should probably check and see if that 
channel lock is working. I'm going to lock it down. And yeah, it can't move. I love that. So perfect. So I would use that channel lock if I just wanted the machine to move forward and back. And that's how that would work. So I'm going to unlock it and keep wheeling it back and forth. And then I'll tighten up all those back bolts too. So now it's time to put our top plate carriage together. This is what's gonna hold the home sewing machine. And the first step is to unscrew this little clamp. And there is a little metal piece in here that not, likes to slip out, as you can see. So just make sure that that doesn't get lost and those stay together. And then now we're going to take this and let's see here, we're gonna send this through the left handle assembly. And that looks like this one. Move this down so you guys can see. We're going to send that through and then grab the handlebars and send that through. And I think this is what uh, allows you to rotate the handlebars and get that into a comfortable position. So I think that's really cool. There we go. Kind of keep pushing it. The threads on that want to get a little bit sticky as they're coming out. Let's see if I lay it down flat, will that work out better? Yeah, there we go. Just needed to be pushed a little harder. There we go. I actually just looked at the directions again and realized that I am actually putting this together backwards. So I'm gonna pull this right back off again. And this is the thing, you know, it's really easy, I think, to look at something and you think you've got it right and then you got it flipped around backwards. And I, this bar is the right handled assembly and I need it to go on the other way. So I'm going to pull this off. There we go. And here's how you'll know this end, this is the mistake I just made. This end right here has a circle. Okay. The one that you want to grab first has a square. So this end right here is shaped like a square. And on the other end, you've got kind of this flat washer. So it's a square on that end. And you want it to be square so that whenever this metal bar goes through, it has a square shape here. That's gonna go all the way through and rest flush. That's the way it's supposed to look. <laughs> yeah, double check the instructions. Grab the right part. All right, that's all good. Here we go. All right, so now I'm gonna take the handlebar and I think I wanna go with the side that has the smooth end. You can see here this high has a smooth end. The other side has kind of a ratchety looking end. So I'm going to go with the smooth end to the inside, to the left. There we go. And then that ratchety end will now lock up with the ratchety end of this right bar. There we go. We got it right now. Okay. And then I need to just grab this clamp. You see how the metal piece just slots right back in there. I'm going to take that and screw it back in. I think I should screw it in while it's open, in that open position like that. That looks good. So tighten that up. Yeah. So this is what's going to allow you some play and movement. That allows you to reposition the handlebars like so. And then you take it and clamp it down. Might need to tighten it up just a little bit. There we go. And then you clamp it down, not too tight though. There's kind of a happy medium there. There we go. Clamp it down nicely and then the handlebars are gonna hold in place. Okay, so that's put together and now we're gonna attach it to the top plate. That is this piece. And I took a look at it because the other piece, uh, basically our bottom carriage, didn't really have a front or a back and you know, not really, it was 100% symmetrical basically. Well, I checked out this one and there definitely is a front and back because of that screw hole. And there's two, one on both sides here, um, but there's not one here on this end. So that means this has gotta be the back. Alrighty, so I'm gonna lay this down and we're gonna place our handlebars on top and kind of start seeing how it's gonna go together. So now I'm gonna grab the screws that came with the top plate. I'm gonna line up 
this back bar, and that's wanting to wiggle, so I'm going to stick a foot here on the end of it and slot that in and just get it finger tight. Again, don't have to crank down on it. We're just gonna try and get this in position so that way it will stand up on its own. Now I am having a little bit of difficulty because I can't really see what I'm doing on that side. So I'm gonna rotate it around and I think this is gonna make it easier so I can really see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna get a knee under it too. There we go. Sometimes you, it's just a process of just wiggling around until everything fits properly. Grab that screw and get it better lined up. That looks good. Now I found these screws to not really want to finger tighten. I really did need to grab my Allen wrench for that. So keep that in mind if you're having just a little bit of trouble getting these threaded, that that might happen to you too. Wiggle this one around. Looks good. I'm not gonna crank it down super tight, but I'm definitely gonna get it attached. go. Rotate it around. I got one more screw on this side. There we go. And I noticed when playing around with the carriage a little bit that some of the wheels were a little bit loose. So I'm also going to go around and tighten all of them up. So now I want to install my machine clamps. This is a gizmo that will hold my home sewing machine nice and tight on the carriage so it doesn't rattle around. And the clamp releases, and you can see that opens up this bottom part, and then I can slot it in here. There we go. And I think I'll just leave that right there and clamp it. I'll just leave it open. Yeah, hold on. Clamp it down right there so that way it holds in place and doesn't rattle around. That way it's not going to get in my way as I'm attaching my home sewing machine. There we go. And then I can tighten those down whenever I get my machine in place. There we go. Okay, so one last step is to install our carriage lock here. And uh, I'm used to having my carriage lock on the back right hand wheel of my carriage on my Grace Cunique 15R or 14 plus downstairs. I have that on my continuum frame. So I really like to have that basically in this location. So this is one of those tricky things as far as uh, spatial orientation goes. Uh, and this particular piece came in of the part uh, in a box for the Q-Zone. Uh, and you wanna make sure not to lose this extra little bag. It has a longer screw and the washer that you're going to need to attach it. So make sure that you found this. This actually almost got lost. Uh, James was taking all the boxes downstairs and I was like, oh, did you get that little box with the little screw and the washer in it? And he said, no, went downstairs. I had to dig through all of the boxes and find it. So this was really easy to miss. So here we go. We're gonna take off this particular wheel. There we go. And we're going to grab the new screw and washer. So now it's gonna be the wheel and the washer and the channel lock. And this is a little bit tricky to figure out how exactly this goes on, but it looks to me like the channel lock needs to go in this direction. So let's see here. We're gonna go with the screw through the channel lock first, then the washer, then the wheel. There we go, just like that. And then get it in position. Maybe I have this backwards. I think I have this, this part backwards. I think that needs to go. <laughs> Spatial orientation thing, definitely. Giving me some problems. Here we go. That goes up. That faces that way. Okay, that's right. 
It's so funny to look at a diagram and things don't always look the way they're supposed to. There we go. I think this is right. And if it's wrong, you know, I think showing you the reality of that is better than glossing over it. And the thing about it is though, it's feeling like this black bar is kind of in my way. So I'm wondering actually if this channel lock is supposed to go on the other side. And when I look at the instructions a little bit more closely, I think that's the problem. So I'm gonna reattach this wheel to the side. Whoops. I'm gonna reattach this wheel with the original screw to the side. And whenever you're attaching the wheel, you've got kind of a thicker side on one side and a, you know, it's more flush on the other side. You can see how that kind of protrudes just a little bit. The metal protrudes out. So you wanna make sure that goes towards the metal on the carriage. So there we go. That's to the inside. I'm gonna crank that down and we'll move over to the other side. I think that's the side that the carriage lock's supposed to go on. I'm gonna give all these wheels a little tighten. Okay, so let's try it on this side. I'm taking out that screw. And now I'm gonna grab the right screw. This is the longer screw that came with the carriage lock. I'm gonna go through the screw, sorry, screw through the carriage lock, through the washer, and then through the flatter side of the wheel so that the side of the wheel that has that extra metal bit is going towards the metal on the carriage. And yep, this is the way it's supposed to go because there's a little bit of plastic, that little black piece of plastic needs to slot in. There's like a groove right there and I was missing it. So there we go. The channel locks have to be, this channel lock has to be on the left side of the carriage. Good to know. And I'm just gonna tighten that down nicely. And there's a little bit of wiggle room there. So I think if you have to adjust it, if it's not hitting the carriage quite right to lock that down, then you have a little bit of room to adjust. Okay, so I think this is almost done. I'm just making sure all the wheels are nice and tight. And then I'm gonna make sure to tighten up these four screws at the back of the carriage so they're locked on and then we'll be ready to go get the sewing machine and put this in place. So I'm just gonna place this top carriage onto the frame, just like so, and you can see how nicely that moves around. And then now I'm gonna grab my home sewing machine and place this on the carriage, right in the middle. And a little bit of a choice here, how far to the front that you can push it. I'm deciding it to kind of put this towards the front more than the back. And the reason is I might end up attaching a spool stand to the back here. And I think having a little bit more room will be really good. So I'm just positioning that, that looks good, roughly in the middle. And now I'm just gonna lift up on those clamps and lock the machine in place. And those are really nice, firm clamps. That's gonna stop the machine from rattling around. Okay, it's really, really exciting at this stage, really ready to get quilting. And now the next step is to attach the back bar. And the reason we couldn't do this before is because this needs to slot through the arm of the machine. Okay, and before I stick it in here, I wanna explain something. <laughs> this is kinda of loud. All right, so you have, Definitely a front and back side here. And how you know the side that needs to face the front has the very large hole. Uh, also, if you look on the other side, you have more of a key hole shape. It has like a little extended uh, square shape on the top. So that goes to the back, this goes to the front, and you'll know you're right when the straps kind of pull back and around and look like this. They look like they're gonna hook onto something like that. That's exactly how they're supposed to work. 
Okay, so that's how it's supposed to go on. Now, one other thing that I noticed I had to adjust before I put this on, I needed to unscrew three screws to remove this plastic piece from the back, and I just left it here uh, and just pushed that out a little bit so that way I would have space to put the rail. Uh, so make sure to unscrew those from both sides, and you may need to go on ahead and lift up the rail itself. The, the entire thing can actually lift and, and change in height. And what that allows you to do is make sure that the rail is gonna clear the top of your machine. And so there's little uh, grips here on the sides and you just release those and then you can pull that part of the frame and, and adjust it to the right height. Now, when I first tried to do that adjustment, it was not moving at all. And there's a little screw on like close to every clamp. There's a little hex screw with the smaller hex size. And let me push this down. You can see it just a little bit better. So that little screw, you need to loosen that. And then you'll be able to unlock those clamps and then be able to lift and adjust the height of that hoop. Okay, so I have it set to be one from the bottom. That looks good, right like that. And I think with that position, it will clear the bed of my machine. Okay, double checking that I've got it in the right position. I've got the large hole facing front and that keyhole shape facing the back. So I'm gonna send that through the arm of the machine. The whole lot of noise. <laughs> and I'm just roughly lining that up whoop, with the other side just kind of slotting it in. There's like a little plastic um, screw hole that it needs to slot into. So I'm gonna line that up on that side and then try and line it up on this side. There we go, it's all lined up. And let me grab, move the camera so you can see what I'm doing. So you can see that is what I'm lining up with that large hole on the back of the rail. Slot that in, slide the plastic piece back over it, and then I have three long screws that go through this and secure it. So just tighten that down. There we go. And I'll do the exact same thing to the other side. So one of the last things to attach are your bungee mounts. Looks like this. And uh, you can slot these onto the side clamp like so, and just thread the end of the bungee cord through and then lock that in place with this little locky guy. Another place that you can attach the bungee cord mounts is down here. And this time you wanna flip it so it's flat side up. And then just slide that into place, same thing. Slot the cord through and then lock it in place. And I think that this is more or less just kind of a holder to hold it in place. Um, you know, just to kind of keep it stashed out of the way. I think it's gonna be more useful up here, but of course you'll need to take this off before attaching your fabric and quilt to the frame if it's long enough to actually use this particular clamp. So yeah, need to learn a little bit more about how these uh, clamps, bungee clamps work, at least with this frame, and I'll definitely be sharing more about that soon. Now one more thing that I just wanted to cover was just how these side locking mechanisms work. Basically, uh, if you pull on this and it doesn't come up easily, there is a screw over here, a little hex screw back here and a little hex screw right here. Loosen those up a little bit. This should be fairly easy to unclamp and raise up and then also lower down. And that needs to be able to move because obviously if you have a higher machine that will need to adjust up uh, or if your quilt gets particularly bulky, then you'll need to be able to adjust it up for that too. So I just popped a practice sandwich here on the frame just to get started. And a few things that I noticed immediately. First thing is it is really easy to want to start as far to the back as you possibly can. However, you've got to remember that you still have a needle bar. That's this little attachment that attaches your needle to your machine. And this comes down really hard whenever you're stitching. So if you push it way too far back, 
you can see what's gonna happen. You're gonna hit your quilt, you're gonna hit those clamps, and you're gonna bang against the rail of your frame. So you've gotta remember that you can't quilt all the way to the back right here. You have to come in a good, I would say, inch and a half at least uh, inside the frame. Another thing, limited this way as well. And this is limited by the size of the harp space of the machine. This is the Juki F for 600, uh, sorry, and it has an eight inch harp space, but quilting wise, I have about five inches of space that I can quilt in here. You're also limited width wise on the frame as well. Uh, whenever you get too close to these sides, the wheels and the carriage will hit the sides too. So please keep in mind, with a whole machine set up on this frame, you're gonna be limited on space. However, you're still going to get the same nice time-saving um, speed of free motion quilting on a frame because you don't have to stop and reposition the quilt constantly. So let me show you how I'm using my machine on this frame. Uh, first off, I'm definitely using my needle up, needle down to bring my bobbin thread up to the surface. I'm starting in the batting area so I don't have to worry about you know, tying off and, and dealing with those thread tails later. The needle down again, just so that way it's uh, down in the quilt. And I'm just using the speed slider here on my machine. This is a particular feature of this machine. You can go from turtle to rabbit, rabbit super fast, turtle super slow. I'm gonna go starting in the middle and then I don't have a foot pedal attached. I'm just hitting the start stop button on the machine. Now, once you hit that button, it goes as you can see. So you kind of have to have one hand on the button and one hand on the handlebars ready to take off. So here we go. Let's see just how fast I can quilt stippling through this area. There's my limit. That's as low as I can go. Now my stitches are huge and that just means that I need to increase the speed of the machine a little bit. Now my stitches are looking just a little bit better. Now the handlebars can adjust as well. Um, they can go all the way down and inside and then they can also go up and over. I kind of like this position. I'm seated as I'm stitching on this frame and the only downside I can say from the seated position, let me stop it here, is that this bar visually is kind, not all the time, but it is at times blocking my vision of the needle. So that is the only real downside of that bar being kind of sort of blocking my vision. But I have found that uh, maybe if I lift the frame slightly, maybe if I take it up one or two notches on those legs, that might take care of that. Uh, but yeah, this clamp does open up just like so. And then I can rotate the handlebars and let's try it straight down just like that. I think that looks good. And again, I'm, this time I'm gonna hit the button and keep a hand on the handlebar all at the same time and get started. There we go, that was a little bit more of a smooth transition. So I'm just gonna stitch through this whole section with stippling and you can see how fast this is gonna go. While no, it is not a very large space, I am able to quilt a fairly large scale stippling through this area and I'm not having to stop and shift the quilt. I'm not having to stop and rotate it. I can do this entire pass relatively quickly. And let's say this you know, was a larger quilt. I'd be quilting across the entire width of the frame with this much stitching and it would in increase my speed. Now, one thing I have been playing with is just seeing how it feels to do denser stitching which of course is something that I like to do too, and I've done quite a bit of that. And I find it really interesting. You know, I'm having um, a little bit of the same control, you know, issues that I have on my long arm, that is, you know, just a little bit of a struggle to travel stitch cleanly. And I can see my handlebar is right in the way, and I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> there we go. Hopefully you can see the stitching just a little bit better there. Uh, but. Travel stitching, uh, echoing is not so much of a problem, but travel stitching certainly is gonna be something that I wanna take a slower speed on. So let me just get through with this and then I will slow down the machine just by using the speed slider on it and try and travel stitch back over the stippling just to give you an example of that. So here we go, I'm gonna slow down, whoop, I went the other way. There we go, I'm gonna slow down the machine and my 
goal here is to travel stitch neatly over the top of the stitching. So there are rotated things around so hopefully you can see a bit better and you can see I'm not going to travel stitch as perfectly as I could on a whole machine because in this case I'm moving the machine on the frame instead. So this is a new skill I need to build. But as far as echoing, that actually works out pretty good. Here I'm now echoing and I could probably increase my speed just a bit, just adjusting the speed slider to go up a little bit. We do have a stitch regulator called Sure Stitch, and that is designed to actually balance with the speed that you're moving your machine on the frame. And we have a limited number of machines that that is tested and guaranteed to work with. So it's one of those things that you kind of have to just look at it. Okay, is, uh, is it a good idea to go with something like that? or simply put a bigger machine on the frame. And my eventual plan is probably to move my uh, 14 plus or 15 R long arm onto this frame instead, simply because it already has a stitch regulator and a lot more space to quilt into. So there we go. That was a really fun build and some fun quilting. You can see what I've stitched. I'm gonna have a lot more fun playing around with this Q-Zone hoop frame. So that's it for building our Q-Zone frame and setting up a whole machine on the carriage. And yes, I will be sharing a lot more videos on how to load this frame, the ins and outs of using a whole machine on it, and you know the different upsides and downsides to working with a frame that's this style. This is a hoop style frame. This is very, very different from my continuum frame downstairs. Uh, the continuum frame, kind of just a, a brief overview of the difference of these two frames. This frame will clamp the quilt very similar to, let's say, a lap hoop that you set on the couch and hand quilt with. Uh, you're basically clamping the quilt from the surface down onto the frame on all sides if, if the quilt is bigger than the frame. Downstairs, my continuum frame has three rails and the quilt is basted and limited by the length of my frame. So I can't quilt anything on that frame that's longer than about 79 inches. That's the longest quilt, widest quilt I've been able to quilt on that frame. This hoop frame theoretically has no limit. I should be able to quilt a king on this frame if I use the leader cloth and get everything set up before I put it on it. That's the one downside I would say. You have to baste your quilt first and then put it on the Q-Zone. So I'm gonna be sharing a lot more videos about this, how it works, uh, quilting real quilts, of course, with you guys. So that way you can see how it's gonna go. I did wanna point out a few other things, a few accessories that you might wanna get with your Q-Zone if you're just getting started. So the first accessory is a speed controller. And this is basically doing the same thing that my start stop button and the speed slider on my machine was doing. Only this puts it in a much more convenient place where I can access it from the handlebar. Uh, I was kind of struggling to hit that button when I needed to on the front of the machine because I couldn't see it. Uh, that's another thing because you're not looking at the machine from the same perspective, it, everything changes just a little bit. So I really like the speed controller. Uh, this is not a stitch regulator, let me make that clear. All this does is it makes your machine stitch at a set speed. That set speed is set here on the speed controller so you can make it go faster or slower. Uh, you can turn it on and off and you can also do a pulse which will drop your needle down, bring it back up again so you can do a needle up, needle down, bring your thread up to the surface. It also has access to a thread cutter if your machine has a thread cutter built in. Now, there's a list of compatible machines with the speed controller on graceframes.com. You want to check that, um, but I will say that my machine was not on that list and it still worked okay. I just ended up with a speed controller designed for Juki machines and it ended up working okay. Uh, so understand that it's good to have a home sewing machine that fits within that list of compatible machines. You can take a risk, it might not work as well. So just understand that that is a little caveat of that device. There is a stitch regulator that's a very different thing. It's a lot more expensive. It's called a Sure Stitch, 
Basically what that will do is as you're moving your machine on the frame, that's going to increase the speed the machine is going depending on how the machine is moving. So that's actually a regulator. It's a lot more expensive. Again, it has a list of machines that it's compatible with, known to be compatible with. Uh, so that's another device that you might want to look into if you're really struggling to get those good looking stitches. So keep that in mind if you're just feeling like it's a struggle to get your machine running smoothly on your frame. We also have back table inserts. This is not a standard accessory. It does not come with your frame, so you can purchase this separately. Uh, and this goes on the back of the frame, so that way you can do pantographs. And I came out with a batch of pantographs a couple of months ago, so you can learn more about pantos at leaday.com slash panto. That's where you can find all of these uh, all of the ones that I've shared so far, you will also need, of course, to do pantographs, you'll need a laser light. So that is a Gracie laser light to do pantographs quilting from the back of the machine. And another thing that we have from Grace Company is the Pattern Perfect system. This is kind of like a pantograph, but a little bit better in the sense that it is kind of a, um, it's a plastic grid. You have a stylus and it gets slotted into that plastic groove and you're kind of forced to stitch it right. Uh, unlike a pantograph where you can wiggle off all over the place, in this case you are guaranteed that perfect nice design. So those are just a few accessories that you might want to check out if you're interested in the Q-Zone frame. You can come and learn more about it on my website leahday.com slash Q-Zone. I am a dealer for Grace Company and Grace Frames and if you use the coupon code hello my quilting friends then you can save a hundred dollars on on your Grace Q-Zone purchase. So I hope you come and check it out and until next time, let's go quilt.